Hello, welcome to the Oxford German Classic Podcast. My name is Carolina von Tropa, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in German literature here at Oxford. I coordinate our essay competition for six formers called a German Classic. And the aim of this podcast is to give you some guidance on how to write a good essay for our competition. Let me introduce my guest, Professor Richie Robertson, who is the Schwartz Taylor Professor of German Language and Literature here at Oxford. And from the very beginning, Richie has kindly taken on the role of the head judge of the German Classic Prize. Um, so Richie, you have read many essays mm -hmm. that have been entered over the years. What do you think distinguishes the best essays that you've read as the head judge? Well, there's no single formula for a good essay, but there are certain um, general guidelines that one ought to follow. The first thing is, get straight to the point. Don't beat about the bush, engage with the question right, right away. That is, um, say in the first paragraph how you understand the question, comment on any significant words in the question, and indicate very roughly how you mean to set about answering it. For example, um, um, you might say that you propose to do A, B and C, and you might put that in the form of rhetorical questions, but that's a very good way of engaging the reader's attention. The reader feels drawn in if he or she is being asked questions. But I say there are various, various ways of doing that. Hmm. So this sounds like a very good piece of advice for how to write a good introduction. Mm -hmm. um, and how to structure the rest of the essay, how to come up with a good structure for an essay. There are, there are plenty of possibilities, and it depends to a large extent on the subject matter. Um, there's no one size that fits all. But um, when you start to write, you must have some notion of the structure you're going to follow, at least a very provisional outline, so that you can change your mind if it doesn't work. And it, it's very often good if you can divide the essay into perhaps three or a maximum of four parts and d deal with each in turn. If you do that, you must make sure that the parts are linked and each follows on from the one before. So <laughs> um, the links would not take the form of, oh, but, oh, and another thing, but rather, if X, then we have to think about Y, and so forth. Um, keep the introduction short, and above all, keep the conclusion short and, and punchy if you can. And Make good use of paragraphs. Remember the paragraph is a unit which begins with a, t with a general topic sentence and then goes into specific detail. That's, that's very important. And um, don't make the paragraphs too long, otherwise the reader is liable to, to get lost. Use paragraphs to give more shape to your argument. Hmm. Right, so... These are all great tips for um, ensuring that your essay has a clear structure mm -hmm. that helps you rather than hindering you. Um, and you've mentioned, Richard, that it's important to keep the reader's attention yeah. throughout mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. engage them from mm -hmm. the beginning yeah. till the end. Um, what are some of... Uh, do you have any other tips for how to do that? Well, one thing which ought to be obvious, but isn't always, is that Although, when you begin the essay, you may know in your own mind what conclusion you're going to come to, you mustn't give it away too soon. Certainly not in the first paragraph. Otherwise, the reader won't, won't want to read on. The reader must be interested and curious to see how the argument is going to develop and where it's going to go. When writing the essay, whatever work of fiction you're writing about, it will, it will have um, characters, um, and you ought to give some kind of analysis of the characters, but don't oversimplify. To a certain extent, characters in fiction are like characters in real life. You can only know so much about them, um, just as we don't really know very much about one another. And a good writer um, presents us with characters who make sense, but who have hidden depths. So tell us about the characters, but don't imagine that you can tell, that it's possible to tell us everything about them. Right, so 
attempting to capture some of this complexity yes. is, is a good thing to do in an essay. Yes. Giving very clear-cut answers often is more disappointing. Yeah. Yes, because you mustn't be afraid of um, um, ambiguity in the text. An, inter an interesting text will not just divide um, characters into good and bad, etc., but will show them as mixed. And to be faithful to the text, you need to bring out the, the ambiguity, or perhaps better, the ambivalence of the text. And that means looking closely at the words the author uses to describe the characters, the characters' feelings and reactions. Yes. Um, and, and this is one good way of substantiating one's claims. So mm -hmm. rather than just telling us what you think about the yes. characters, show us how they are built on the page and how they work. Yes, it's, it's very important to present textual evidence for your assertions. Um, whatever you, you want to claim about the story, you do need to be able to point to and quote briefly a passage of the text that supports your claim. Mm -hmm. And what are some tips that you could give on quoting from the text? What to do, what not to do? Well, don't quote too much. The reader doesn't want to read a long chunk of the text because they've read that, they've read that anyway. Um, quote briefly, quote no more than is needed to make your point, and whatever you quote, also comment on it. Um, your commentary on a quotation should um, be at least as long as the quotation itself. Very often, it'll be enough to quote a single word and, and explain it. Um, and you may want to explain that word in quite some detail. Then the words that will be particularly interesting are emotional words, words that um, give the emotional tone of the passage. So, for example, adjectives are liable to be very important, especially if you find two adjectives together that seem incongruous. Adverbs also, and the verbs indicating the character's actions can be very important. For example, it makes an enormous difference whether, whether X speaks, X whispers, or X shouts, or X screams. Yes, so this is the level of detail mm -hmm. that, that we want to see in an essay. Yeah. Really go down to the level of individual words mm -hmm. and unpack them for us. And to, to do that, you must of course have been through the text very, very carefully. You may read it in English, that's fine as a help, but what really counts is reading the text in German with, with, with the dictionary and looking up difficult and unfamiliar words. You can't look up every unfamiliar word, you, because reading in a foreign language is partly a matter of intelligent guessing, but every word that seems to be important, you should be as clear as you can be what it means. Yes. Um, are there any specific places in the text that are always worth looking at in more detail, because they tend to be especially interesting or important? Well, the way in which um, the text opens the way in which the situation and the characters are, are introduced always demands close attention, because that sets up the reader's expectations, which may be satisfied later on or more often um, 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 disturbed and surprised. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so the opening or the closing mm -hmm. are always mm -hmm. very interesting to look at and worth commenting on if you find them particularly striking. Certainly. Um, so we've talked about quoting from the text mm -hmm. and using this textual evidence to mm -hmm. support your argument. Um, how should one go about using secondary sources, so secondary literature, mm -hmm. or even the podcasts that we record for this competition? Well, we, we supply you with a certain amount of material, and the material is carefully chosen, so you don't have to go hunting all over the internet for, for further material. Um, you also need to, to consult critics' opinions, but you mustn't be overawed by them. Think of it this way. Discussion of literature is, a, is an ongoing conversation, and critics take part in that conversation, and you yourself are taking part in it, and you're able and entitled to form your own opinion. You do need to acknowledge what other people have said, but um, you, don't need to, you don't need to agree with it blindly, and it's not very interesting if you do. 
It's much better if you can quote a critic and disagree, uh, disagree at least partially or mildly, because that helps you to make your own point in a, in a more exact way. And you mustn't be alarmed when you find different crit critics disagreeing with each other. That should send you back to the text to try to make up your own mind. Yes. So secondary sources can be used um, as, um, as something to agree with or disagree with or as a jumping off yes, point exactly. for mm -hmm. your own ideas. Mm -hmm. You can develop further or think further yep. along the lines that the critic is suggesting. Precisely. But the important thing is not to just quote for the sake of quoting. Definitely not. But to engage yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with what you've read about the text. Once again, the reader wants to know what you think. The reader wants to know only briefly what X, Y and Z have thought before. Yes. Um, and now, what about the style? What sort of voice should one adopt? OK. All right. Um, you don't have to write in some kind of special academic style. Good writing is simple and straightforward. You don't have to use long or far-fetched words. Um, one good rule of thumb is this. Um, make sure that whatever you write, you can read aloud to somebody else without being embarrassed with a straight face. Um, at the same time, academic writing is not quite the same as everyday writing. So, for example, the contractions we use all the time, like don't, can't, won't, etc., you should either avoid these or use them only sparingly. In that sense, um, academic writing is a little bit more formal than, than everyday language. But um, on the whole, simplicity is good. Short, pithy sentences are good. Yes. Um, and this is not always easy to achieve mm -hmm. when first drafting your essay, no, no. Mm -hmm. which means that you have to edit it carefully. Yes. So can you talk a bit more about the process of editing and what one should watch out for? OK. Um, once you've got your first draft, leave it for a time so you can get some distance from it, then go over it. And you, you may sometimes be thinking, oh my god, did I write that? <laughs> um, at all events, um, take out anything that seems not to fit or that seems, seems irrelevant, um, and um, if anything seems redundant, if you, th if you think you've gone off at a tangent about something that doesn't belong in your main argument, don't hesitate to take it out. If in doubt, leave it out. So you have to be your own editor and sometimes quite, quite critical. But again, don't over-edit, because it's good if the essay also reads in, in a fairly fresh way. Yes. Um, we have already talked about it a little bit, uh, about the first step to writing a good essay. Mm -hmm. What is the first step that everybody should take? Yep. Um, and you have already mentioned that it's reading the text, mm -hmm. um, reading it very carefully, reading it more than once. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on how to approach uh, reading a text, especially in a foreign language, how to work with it before one even starts writing the essay? Hmm. Going on my own experience, I spend some time reading languages that I don't know very well. Um, it's very useful to read to struggle through the German first and then read the English and see how much of it you really understood. I think that's probably better than reading the English first and then the German, but um, that may, 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 may work for you as well. Um, it's important to take notes. Um, you have to remember the text, and so it's quite good if you can make a summary of the plot without going into excessive detail. You must be clear about um, about um, the main events, about, about what happens. Because it is possible to to get the events wrong, and then that makes a very bad a very bad impression. So your your notes are important. And as I said, um, work the dictionary. Um, make sure you understand the meaning of at least a lot of unfamiliar words, because in doing that, you're also adding to your own vocabulary. It's part of language learning. 
yes, and after such a careful, repeated reading of the text, you should be ready to get started yes. on the essay itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much, Ricci, for explaining how to go about writing a good essay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to reading more submissions. We are indeed. <laughs> For those of you listening, have a look at our website uh, or just search for Oxford German Classic Prize to find out more about our essay competition for six formers. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a lot. Do have a look at other episodes of this podcast too. But for now, bye-bye and tschüss.